Hi guys, it's Nicole and today I'm going to do a layout share for the last five layouts that I did in that 20 layout kind of challenge that I issued myself. And I've mentioned it in previous videos, but if this is the first one that you are watching, I participated and did every single sketch from a recent sketch bundle that was put out from Scrapbook Generation. It was designed by Allison Davis and it was basically um, double page layouts using six by six paper pads, 20 sketches, and I did them all and I actually did manage to finish all of them within that 20 week like live parameter of the Facebook group. I didn't necessarily keep up with posting them on the Mondays um, when like each week started, but I am glad that I finished. I'm glad that I kind of powered through it. And it's one of those processes that I thoroughly enjoy. So I'm already kind of debating about going through this with the single page sketches as well. And I know that some of you have mentioned that you would be interested in seeing that too. So this is kind of the time of year where I start figuring out where I'm going to go with videos for next year. So that now is kind of the time that if you do have a suggestion for me, go ahead and put it in comments to videos. And it's this is just kind of the time of year where I start getting motivated and I start kind of organizing my process. So this is sketch 16. There is a process video for all of them. They're not necessarily in the order 16 through 20. I just did the videos as, as I got the layouts done. So this one was using a Doodlebug collection and I pretty much just relied on the two packs of die cuts and a sticker sheet and then Nuvo drops. And just again, kept it simple. I did stitch on this one. It did keep it pretty close to the sketch. I think I changed up the photos over here and my photos, I wasn't paying attention. I printed these a little bit bigger than what she depicted and just kind of made it work. For 17, I talk a lot in my video about the modifications. Uh, the sketch shows these photos being over here. And I'm pretty sure I kind of modified this area and I stretched my photos to be a lot bigger just because of the way the subjects of my photos was going to make it easy to crop that way. Um, this is one of the ones where I didn't necessarily have a lot of pre-made product that was going to work with what I wanted to end up with. So I just used a Mickey head punch that it was a punch I bought from scrapbook.com. I'll try to post a link below. It's one big punch that does five, I think six different size Mickey heads. And so I just made my own embellishments and I layered them. Hopefully you guys will be able to see. I layered them with just some white cardstock behind them to kind of give it that chipboard feel. And then these are just some, um, I wanna say these are probably doodlebug black rhinestones. They've kind of made them for years. I think, I think I stole these from a Halloween collection. So kept this simple. A lot of times I do like to do this where I like to put my journaling with my title and kind of keep all my text together. I just visually like that. And um, I mentioned in videos before, I like using these small alphabets, but when I use them, I personally like them better when they are popped up instead of being flat to a layout. But these kind of lit these kind of letters, I prefer flat to a layout. Kind of weird, but go with what you like. Okay, this one is 18, and this was actually the 19th one that I managed to finish. This one took me five days to do, and looking at it, it doesn't seem like there's that much involved, but if you go back and watch the process video, I kind of explain why it took me so long. Other than the pattern papers, everything else I made myself. I made my own pipes, I die cut the tops of the pipes, I die cut the yellow boxes, the coins, the clouds, I stitched on the clouds, I stitched on the pipes, I stitched on my, um, letters, which these were a die as well. I, and I talked about in the video, I wasn't trying to recreate a specific like scene or a specific level in a Mario. I just wanted to have the like vibe or the feel that you get when you think of Mario. So this is 18. Again, there is a process video for all of them. I will link them below. I'll also link the full playlist for any 
any process videos that I have that are done with six by six paper pads. This was sketch 19. I did modify my photos. I wanted to use these selfies that I took at the Scrapbook Generation Create Crop from 2018. So the original sketch I think called for four by four photos and a four by six photo over here. And then there would have been a gap, like a this this kind of a gap on this side as well. I modified my photos and turned them into three by threes and then added two three by threes here instead of a four by six. And then an, because of my modifications, it changed the total, like the total dimension of the photo area. So I changed the dimensions of the photo strips that were going here. And then I kept it super simple. I want the, I want the focus to be on my photos. So I just took a couple stickers from the coordinating stickers that go with this pad and did a quick title with some alphabet stickers. Kept it simple because when I look at this, I want to see the people that I was hanging out with, the people that I have spoken to for years through my keyboard, but was able to hug them and talk to them. So I want it to be the emphasis on, on the people. So this was 19 and then 20 was the last video to go up. So this one I did keep very close to her sketch. I did modify my actual photos, but the total measurement of the photo area is the same. So when I want to keep the same area, but I want to change the size of my photos, I just play around in Photoshop. A lot of times I will just put a grid overlay on a blank document, crop my photos, and drag and drop them into that document and kind of digitally move them around onto the paper to figure out, okay, if I want this one here and I want this one here, which one can I can I crop down to be a little bit more narrow because these ones might be three inches, but this one's two and a half inches because I need a total distance of, of whatever it was. So that's how I figure out the math on these. These are those um, super skinny alphabet dies that I absolutely love and I talked about in a community post on YouTube. Um, these are from scrapbook.com. I bought them when they went super, super on sale for $20. They're now still on sale, but for $30. But you get the uppercase and the lowercase. And this is the skinny font. And then I had used the like bold font is what I cut these out with. So I like super basic fonts for my alphabet dies. And then this one down here is a, it's from the stamp market. It's designed to make like a letter board that you would put on a card. But I like the small size of the alphabet for doing like a subtitle. But I, like I said, I kept this the same size. I put my circles in the exact spots. She had it, her journaling was shown as like a block up here. And to me, it just kind of felt weird heavy. I don't know. It just, it felt weird. I wanted that to stay open. So I chose to do journaling strips and then I just kind of put them at different, um, what is it? I can't think, I can't think of the word. <laughs> they're not left aligned. They're not right aligned. They're not centered. They're just kind of mixed up. And when I, lately I've, when I do journaling strips, hopefully you guys will be able to see, I put them on foam strips and I, I keep telling you guys, if you guys have not tried these, you have to try these. It's like the most ridiculous, like basic product that I've bought recently, but it's so much easier than the big, like 3M roll that I've used for like 10 years. So I bought a bunch of these when their adhesive was on sale. So stock up when you see like your favorite online stores do their sales like that. Um, so I'm going to post some links down below. So if you're looking for a specific process video, if you want just access to the playlist without having to go through my channel, I'll post stuff like that below. Um, and anything that I think you guys might find interesting or that's possibly new. Now I am going to post another video regarding these layouts and I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to kind of do like a class roundup or class review and just kind of talk about um, some stats on my layout, some things that I learned along the way, um, just kind of different thoughts regarding this. Now, unfortunately, 
the sketch bundle has been removed from their website because I think that they were having some issues with people being upset about not being able to get into either of the two Facebook groups. Um, I will tell you that it sounds like she is going to be doing other either sketch bundles or classes in that same format. And in my review video, which I'm going to film next, I am going to show you a little bit of like what you get by by purchasing something like that in time to join the Facebook group because she really does go above and beyond to give you some extra stuff. So with that, I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to go gather up the rest of my layouts and some of the notes that I had taken and I'm going to kind of do more of, like I said, like a review and just kind of my thoughts on the process along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just end that here and I'm going to say bye and I will catch you guys in the next one.